بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ہوپ یو آر ڈوئنگ ویل ویلکم ٹو دا ففتھ اینڈ فائنل پارٹ آف فائلو جینیٹکس ٹو ڈے ان شاء اللہ وی ویل فنش آف وتھ دس ٹاپک بائی ڈسکسنگ دا ریمیننگ پوائنٹس آئی ہوپ دا فرسٹ فور پارٹس آر کلیئر ٹو یو ناؤ وی ہیو بین موونگ وتھ سلو پیس اینڈ ڈسکسنگ وٹ ایور کیوریز یو ہیڈ ان کیو ایس سیشن سو لیٹ سی وٹ وی ہیو ٹو ڈے Uh, phylogenetic tree construction is a five step process just to recall uh, uh, these five steps some of the steps we already have discussed in our previous lectures uh, step number four that is determining a tree building method uh, we will continue with this uh, in the last two lectures we talked about different methods uh, that were distance based method so today we will continue with uh, from there So for building a tree we have two main methods one is known as distance based method and the other one is the character based method in the distance based method we talked about UPGMA uh, and we also talked about neighbor joining met method initially uh, we intended to um, discuss Fitch Margolias method also but for now I think we should uh, skip this uh, method I will discuss uh, sometimes later if you have time and today we will uh, discuss character based method and in the character based method we have uh, two different methods maximum parsimony and maximum likelihood it doesn't mean that in distance based method we have just these three methods or in character based method we have just a maximum parsimony and maximum likelihood method there are some other methods also but these are the most commonly or widely used methods so that's why we are discussing just these methods The character based method is based directly on sequence characters rather than on pairwise distances. If you remember in uh, distance based method we used to generate a multiple sequence alignment and then we used to compare two sequences together to look for number of substitutions and on the basis of number of substitution uh, two taxa were brought together uh, joined with an, in an internal node and repeat the process until the whole tree is made. So here in character based method we also generate a multiple sequence alignment. Here you can see an MSA of, uh, of, a, of some gene for six different organisms or six taxa. Now the number that are uh, uh, from 1 to 8 that are shown in the top of the figure they represent sites. So for a given multiple sequence alignment uh, we have multiple sites and each site contains a specific character for respective taxa for example here you can see for site number one we have an adenine for taxa a we have a guanine in taxa two we have an adenine in three adenine in taxa four adenine in taxa five and adenine in taxa six so these are the characters and each character is present in a specific site and we are more interested on uh, these characters on a specific site. Here also uh, you'll also observe one thing that some of the sites they have been highlighted or they have been shaded okay like site number two, site number five and site number eight. These sites are known as informative sites. Now what does informative site means? Sites that have at least two different kinds of characters and each character occurring at least twice okay so if you first focus on site number one you can see that except for taxa 2 all the taxa they contain an adenine and only taxa 2 contain a guanine okay so this does not give a, give us much information because all the characters are same in a different taxa and the, in, in uh, taxa 2 there was a mutational event or substitution event uh, which happened once and taxa 2 contained a G on that specific site. Similarly for site number 3, site number 4, 6 and 7 you can see that most of the uh, nucleotides or most of the characters on that specific site they are the same except for one. So this kind of uh, in, uh, site does not give us much information. However, if we consider the informative sites, if you pay attention to uh, site number two, 
so now the uh, the, the the character present on site uh, number two they are quite different in different taxa okay so uh, for for taxa number one there's an a for taxa number two there's a g taxa number three there's again an a for four there's a g and for five and six we have a c okay so there is a difference in the presence of a character at a specific site and this kind uh, and this type of sites they are the informative site they help us to construct a phylogenetic tree uh, this will become more clear when we'll uh, when we uh, do an example uh, shortly uh, this will become more clear to you okay so for character based method we have uh, we'll discuss uh, two different methods here maximum parsimony and maximum likelihood we'll discuss in detail maximum parsimony and we'll just get an overview of maximum likelihood method so maximum parsimony method is based on the principle of parsimony which dictates that a theory should provide the simplest possible and viable explanation for a phenomena what do we mean by this suppose there uh, exist two explanations for an occurrence okay in this case the one that requires the smallest number of assumptions is usually correct another way of saying is that uh, the more assumptions you have to make the more unlikely an explanation is uh, for example suppose there is a student who got an F who failed an exam now there can be a uh, number of possibilities or m multiple reasons for his failure the first one is the student did not prepare well for the exam the second one is the course instructor did not like the student and awarded an F grade which sometimes students they think and number three is uh, the, the the textbook publisher was a mean person and he intentionally wrote wrong reinterpretations in the textbook so that uh, he can sabotage the career of future bioinformaticians okay so there are three different uh, explanation for why the student got an F in his exam okay but from these three different uh, explanations or reasons number one reason is most likely the student did not prepare well for the exam that's why that's why he got an F in his exam okay. so in uh, in phylogenetics we can uh, we can say that the best tree is the one that has the fewest evolutionary changes or the most parsimonious tree is the one that has the fewest evolutionary changes uh, this can be understood with this simple example here you can see that here in this example there are different characters at a specific site for a given taxa suppose this is site number one okay so site number one contains uh, these characters for specific taxa so if we consider this G and T this shows that the ancestral uh, character should be a G or a T okay for these A T and A the ancestral character should contain an A or T and for this one uh, the ancestral character should be a T okay so from this we can say that the ancestral character for all these taxa uh, they, there's a possibility that there was a G there was an A or there was a T okay and because of mutational events uh, uh, this is the final product or this is the uh, current situation but if we uh, uh, calculate uh, or, or if we consider a G as uh, as as an example or A or T we see that if we consider T to be the ancestral trait or ancestral character the number of mutational events required to reach this state is only three but if we consider G or A uh, the number of mutational events would could be more so uh, presence of a T in the ancestor is the best possibility because to reach this current state it only requires three mutational events so this tree with a thymine at the ancestral uh, character is the most parsimonious or the best one uh, let's understand this uh, concept of maximum parsimony 
with an example suppose we have four different organisms human chimpanzee gorilla and orangutan and we have a multiple sequence alignment for a gene x this is the multiple sequence alignment and uh, for nine different sites we have site number three site number six and site number seven uh, to be the informative sites the rest of the sites are non-informative so we will disregard the non-informative ones and just consider the informative sites for our example and other ex assumption that we are going to make in, uh, in this example is orangutan to be the out group uh, this assumption is uh, made just to make our example easy to understand and keep uh, our example as, as simple as possible. Assuming orangutan to be the out group, uh, we can have three different possibilities uh, or three different tree topologies that can be uh, made. Okay, so. Tree number one uh, is uh, in tree number one. You can see that humans and chimpanzees they are uh, placed next to each other and uh, through an internal node, which shows that human and chimpanzees they are closely related to each other. Uh, for tree number two, uh, we have humans and gorillas. They are closely related to each other. And for tree number three, we have chimpanzees and gorillas together. Uh, joined with a with an internal load uh, that shows that chimpanzees and gorillas they are closely related to each other. Now we have three different tree, tree topologies, uh, assuming that the orangutan is the out group, and out of these three trees, we have to find out which tree is the best one. And uh, to 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 get the best tree out of these three trees, we'll use the maximum parsimony principle, and for that we will refer to our multiple sequence alignment that was shown in the previous slide and for this we will only be uh, you know uh, taking into consideration the informative sites only and we'll disregard the non informative sites here so let's see uh, what we have at position number 3 for tree number 1 so at position or site 3 uh, in tree number 1 we have an adenine for humans we have an adenine for uh, chimpanzees then we have a guanine for gorillas and guanine for uh, orangutan okay so so this ancestral node contains a g let's assume that there is a g okay so this g was retained in this ancestor that went to the gorilla and after divergence here th somewhere here there was a G to A mutational event and this A was then kept in humans and chimpanzees so for uh, tree number one at site number three the total number of mutational events that happened is one right okay so let's see what we have at position number six or site number six for tree number one so for site number six we have a thymine for humans we have a thymine for chimpanzees we have a cytosine for gorilla and we have a cytosine for orangutan and this ancestral node consider we have a cytosine here and this cytosine was retained here and uh, by the gorilla and somewhere here the cytosine to thymine uh, mutational event happened and this thymine was the later kept by humans and chimpanzees so again the total number of mutational events at site number six for tree number one is one okay now let's do it do this same for site number seven so for site number seven we have an adenine for humans we have a cytosine for chimpanzees we have an adenine for uh, gorilla and again we have a cytosine for uh, orangutan okay so this ancestral node consider there was a c here 
and then here there was a C to A mutational event and this A was then retained by gorilla and also humans retained this mutation but here there was a A to C mutational event and this C was then uh, kept by the uh, chimpanzees at, at this specific site so for site number 7 uh, we have a total number of mutational events equal to 2 so if we, if we add these three numbers it will sum up to add up to 4 uh, total number of mutations for tree number 1 now let's see uh, about uh, what we have for tree number 2 so if we uh, look at tree number 2 and see what we have uh, position at position number one so we have a adenine for humans at position number three or site number three uh, we have uh, guanine for gorillas we have adenine for chimpanzee and then we have a guanine for gorilla so again here's a G and then there was a G to a mutational event okay this A was kept by a chimpanzee and also to humans and then here was a A to G mutational event. So for site number 3, tree number 2, total number of mutational events were 2. Right? Now let's see what we have at position number 6. So for position number 6, at site number 6, we have a thymine for humans, we have a cytosine for gorilla, we have thymine for a chimpanzee, and then we have a cytosine for orangutan. Again, if we consider ancestral uh, character to be C, so there was a C to T evolutionary change. And this T was then uh, retained in chimpanzees and humans. And here again we have a T to C substitution. And for position number 6, a total number of evolutionary changes that happened is 2. Now let's see what we have at position number 7. Let me drop this. For position number 7, We have adenine for humans, we have adenine for gorilla, we have cytosine for chimpanzee and then we have cytosine for orangutan. So the ancestral character was a cytosine which was retained in chimpanzees and then there was a C to A transition that was retained in humans and chimpanzees. So at site number 7 for tree number 2, total number of mutational events that occurred is equal to 1. So these three values, they add up to 5. Similarly for tree number 3, you can do the calculations yourself. Again, just like we have been doing uh, previously, I'll leave uh, this part uh, for you. Uh, you guys should fill it yourself. And I'll just write the values for tree number 3 here and then you can uh, check your values uh, referring to this uh, table okay so for tree number 3 at position number 3 the total number of mutational uh, events at position number 3 were 2 for position number 6 we had 2 um, evolutionary changes and at position number seven we had total number of mutation events to be equal to one so this adds up to five okay so uh, here you can see that out of these three trees uh, tree number one contained least number of mutational events and uh, this tree is the best tree according to the maximum parsimony principle okay 
So another character based approach is the maximum likelihood method will not go into the detail what this method is how this method you know actually uh, you know works uh, but uh, I'll just give you an overview about this method uh, that it in, 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 in uh, maximum likelihood uh, it the, the algorithm is basically a probabilistic model that chooses the best tree that has the highest probability so uh, that tree will be considered or that tree will be given as an output which has the highest probability to occur okay uh, and and that tree uh, will most likely uh, be reflecting the actual evolutionary process so basically the the, 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 the driving force behind uh, this algorithm is the probability and likelihood uh, this method is an exhaustive method again uh, where it search for each and every possible tree topology and unlike a maximum parsimony where we were only uh, taken into consideration uh, the, the informative sites uh, maximum likelihood method considers each and every position in an alignment whether it's an informative one or a non-informative one okay so uh, in this method uh, by em employing you know substitution models uh, substitute what are substitution models they are basically the probability values for residue substitution so what's the probability of uh, uh, mutating one uh, character into another okay so in this method by employing a uh, substitution models it calculates the total likelihood of the ancestral sequence evolving to internal nodes and eventually to existing sequence okay so this is how maximum likelihood method uh, works and will not uh, talk much about uh, this approach so once the tree is constructed whether we uh, have used the distance based approach or the character based approach uh, the next step is to assess the reliability of a tree and uh, for any tree that is given as an output uh, there, there are two important questions that should be uh, that are you know uh, that should be taken care of or that should be answered the first question is how reliable is the tree or the portion of the tree is and the second question is uh, if the given tree is significantly better than uh, another tree okay so to answer these question we use different analytical resampling techniques such as bootstrapping and jackknifing uh, these are different uh, analytical resampling strategies uh, that are uh, that are used to assess the uh, tree reliability okay so in in boot bootstrapping we repeatedly resample the tree through uh, slight perturbations in the uh, data set as we can see in the figure there's an original alignment and its corresponding tree then what we do we resample the data set by repeating or deleting uh, data at specific site and say if the tree made after the resampling is same as the original one or not as you can see the bootstrap replicate one bootstrap replicate two and this process is continued for you know hundreds hundreds of time okay and uh, if uh, after you know uh, bootstrapping uh, we have a final bootstrap value of greater than 70 then uh, our tree is considered to be a reliable one uh, jackknifing uh, which is another um, method of uh, analytical resampling um, in in this technique uh, uh, actually half of the sites in data sets are randomly deleted uh, creating data sets that are half as long as the original one uh, this will reduce the number of free topologies that the algorithm uh, needs to verify uh, which will ultimately reduce the time required to uh, construct different trees so bootstrapping and jackknifing are uh, basically uh, analytical resampling trees uh, two two techniques of uh, many different techniques that are uh, used to assess the tree reliability uh, that's it for um, phylogenetics topic uh, here we will uh, will stop uh, and will not discuss more about uh, phylogenetics and we'll move to uh, our new topic but in the question answer session uh, I'll see if uh, uh, we'll discuss about some common misconceptions about trees and some common mistakes that are being uh, made while reading the phylogenetic tree so that will be uh, uh, discussed in QA session uh, so we'll, we'll uh, 
meet in the Q&A sessions. Uh, till then, uh, Allah Hafiz.